The European Union's biggest regional policy event attracted over 6,000 delegates from almost 250 regions and cities from across Europe to Brussels in October for the 8th annual Open Days Conference. The four-day event was organized by the European Commission and the EU's Committee of the Regions under the banner of competitiveness, cooperation and cohesion for all regions. There was much focus on boosting economic recovery in the context of the EU's 2020 strategy to promote sustainable growth and employment. The context of the Open Days is clear this year. Europe has a new strategy for the next 10 years, Europe 2020, that is intended to equip us for the future and at the same time get us out of the crisis, which hit us only two years ago. The EU's Regional Policy Commissioner insisted that regional and city authorities are in a crucial position to push forward the objectives of the 2020 strategy. We need to focus our priorities on getting more people in jobs, boosting competitiveness and building an open and modern single market. This means kick-starting the 2020 reform agenda today, not only to underpin recovery, but to do so in such a way to encourage a new economy which is smarter, greener and more inclusive. The European Week of Regions and Cities brought together academics, public officials and business representatives for over 130 seminars in Brussels, plus 260 events elsewhere in Europe, all designed to promote the role of regions in driving forward the 2020 growth strategy. However, the open days weren't only about economics. The environment took center stage at a meeting with the United States Conference of Mayors, which led to the signing of a landmark agreement to work together in the fight against climate change. We believe that when we work together from cities and regions, we can influence our people to make the difference. Campaigners from Romania and Northern Ireland met with EU officials to discuss how football can be used to tackle racism, sectarianism and social exclusion. And what I saw happening in football in Romania, I hope I will see happening in the society too. Because the, the change was so dramatic that I, I never expected it. Other discussions range from cooperation among regions along the River Danube to promoting the use of electric vehicles in Europe's cities or region-to-region -region cooperation with nations outside the EU. There was also a cultural program that included Roma actors from Slovakia and youth theatre from eastern England. In the meeting rooms, much of the debate focused on the need to ensure that the EU maintains sufficient funding to allow all regions to play their role. It's really very important to maintain in the EU budget a sufficient volume of funds for the regional policy because it's an essential part of the European integration. You cannot go on only with a few countries uh, going fast and also lagging behind. The chair of the European Parliament's Regional Development Committee said more EU spending was needed at a time when national governments are increasingly cutting back. What is absolutely clear today is that all national budgets will be in the years to come under the pressure to reduce deficits and also to reduce debts. And for me, that clearly means that we will need a more generous European budget because regions and cities to deliver growth, to create new jobs, to be more resource efficient, to invest in innovation, they will need more support coming from European budget. On the final day, experts looked to the future. The question facing delegates was should EU cohesion funding be reserved for the poorest regions? Or should more go to the rich, who have a better chance of driving forward the economy as a whole? I think it makes economic sense against that backdrop to concentrate money where it is scarcest and institutional capacity weakest. It's a debate that will only intensify as the EU prepares for a major review of its regional policy in 2013.